the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gospel for Trinity Sunday from St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Going therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. Homily by St. Basil the Great, Bishop and Doctor. Sacred Tradition, a Divine Guide. Tradition as Guide to the Right Understanding of the Holy Scripture. Of the beliefs and public doctrines entrusted to the care of the church, there are some which are based on scriptural teaching, others which we have received handed down in mystery by the tradition of the apostles, and in relation to the true religion, they both have the same force. Nor is there anyone who will contradict them, no one certainly who has the least acquaintance with the established laws of the church. For were we to attempt to reject the unwritten practices of the church, as being without great importance, we would unknowingly inflict mortal wounds on the gospel, or rather, we would make of our public teaching a mere pretense and nothing more. For example, if I may cite in the first place what are the first and most common practices of tradition, who is it has, that has taught us in writing to sign with the sign of the cross those who place their trust in Jesus Christ our Lord? What that is written has taught us to turn towards the east when we pray. The words of invocation at the consecration of the Eucharistic bread and the chalice of blessing, which of the saints has left them to us in writing? For we are not content with the words both the gospel and the apostles have recorded, but have added some others, both before these and after them, as having great signific significance in relation to the mystery, and which have been received from the unwritten tradition. We also bless the water for baptism, and also the oil of chrism, and even the person baptized, on the authority of what writings? Is it not rather on the authority of secret mystic tradition? And the anointing with oil, what written words tell us to do this? And the threefold immersion, where does it come from? And the other practices at baptism, the renouncing of Satan and his angels, do these not come from that veiled and secret doctrine which our fathers have safeguarded in unquestioning and simple silence? For they have learned to guard the sacredness of the mysteries in silence. For doctrine that was withheld, even from the uninitiated, catechumens, was not to be made known to all and in sundry writing. What did the great Moses mean by not making known to all the sacred things of the sanctuary? Numbers. He decreed that those not de dedicated to the service of the altar should stay without the gates, the first court to be accessible only to the purified, and only the Levites were to be held worthy of being servants of the divinity. Sacrifices and burnt offerings of the remaining remainder of the sacred ritual he allotted to the priests. One chosen for the rest he admitted to the innermost part, and this one not at all times, but only on one day in the year, and it was lawful to enter only at a certain hour of the day, when, because of its wonder and strangeness, he might look with awe at the Holy of Holies. For Moses, in his wisdom, knew that what becomes accessible to all is then exposed to irreverence while what is unseen and withheld tends, because of our nature, to be held in reverence. In the same way, the apostles and fathers, when they were establishing the order of things at the beginning, guarded the sanctity of the mysteries with silence and secrecy. And that is not a mystery at all, which is divulged to the ears of everyone. This is the reason of the handing down of what was not written, so that the knowledge of our doctrines might be, not be neglected by the people because of too great familiarity. Public and private teachings are two distinct things. The one is retained in silence, the other made known to all. A form of this silence is seen in sacred scripture, which makes certain truths difficult to understand, and this for the advantage of the reader. Tradition and the Confession of Faith at Baptism Time will run short if I go to recall the unwritten mysteries of the Church. Of all the rest I shall be silent, but of the Confession of Faith itself and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. From what written source does it come? For if, in accord with the tradition of baptism and of true repentance, reverence for God, as we are baptized, so also should we believe, and our profession of faith should be in accord with our baptism, then let our adversaries grant us that we should also give praise to God in accord with our faith. And if they reject the form in which we give praise to God, the doxology, as not given in the scriptures, let them also give us from the scriptures the proofs for the confession of faith and the other things we spoke of. 
We believe that he who is named in the giving of baptism should also be named in the profession of faith. For we have made the profession of faith the beginning, the mother, as it were, of our giving praise to God, doxologia. What then must we do? Now they must teach us either not to baptize in the manner handed down to us, or not to believe in the accordance with our baptism, or not to give glory to God in accordance with our belief. Let any man disprove, if he can, the logical relationship of these propositions to one another, or that any innovation in regard to these things does not mean the undoing of the whole structure of the faith. Yet high and low they never cease from shouting that the praise of God with the Holy Spirit is without authority and unscriptural, and so on. We have told you that it makes no difference to the meaning whether you say, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, or to say, Glory be to the Father and to the Son together with the Holy Ghost. The syllable and, which comes from the Lord's own mouth, we can neither cancel nor reject. Neither are we forbidden to reject its equivalent, with. Their similarity we have already proved to you. And our op opinion is confirmed by the apostle who uses either the one or the other, as when he says, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God, 1 Corinthians. And again, You being gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus, 1 Corinthians holding it as of no importance whether you use the conjunction or the preposition. Confirmation from tradition. In reply to those who say that in the formula used in giving praise to God, the preposition with the Spirit has no authority in Scripture, we answer, if no other unwritten teaching is received, then neither must this be. But if the greatest number of our mystical truths have come to us through unwritten tradition, then let us receive this together with those as many, so many others. For I hold it to be an apostolic practice to adhere also to unwritten tradition. For the apostle says, I praise you that in all things you are mindful of me and keep my ordinances as I have delivered them to you. 1 Corinthians. And again, hold the traditions which you have learned, whether by word or by epistle. One of these traditions is the practice of which we now speak, which they who established things in the beginning have rooted by long custom firmly in the truth and handed firmly in the ch church and handed down from one to the other, the, the practice advancing ever with time and usage. If in a court of law in default of written proof we could bring forward many witnesses, would we not secure a verdict of dismissal? For my part, I think we would. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall stand. Deuteronomy. And if we show clearly to you that a long period of time was also in our favor, would it not seem probable to you that this charge should not be made against us? For these ancient teachings must be held in reverence and should be rev revered even for their hoary antiquity. I shall therefore recount to you the champions of this belief, and time too must be taken into account in regard to what has continued unchallenged. For it did not begin with us. How could it? For we are but of yesterday, says Job, at least in comparison with the history of this custom. For my own part, if I may speak of myself, I cherish this usage as, as a sort of inheritance came down to me from the fathers, delivered to me by one who had long labored in God's service, by whom I was baptized and admitted to the servants of the church. While searching as far as I was able to see if any of the blessed ancients made use of these words, which are now called into question, I found many who possess great authority, both because of their antiquity and because of the accuracy of their knowledge, unlike these others. Of these, some join together the words of the doxology by means of the preposition, others by the conjunction. Neither thinking they were doing anything different, that is, contrary to the true mind of religion. There is Irenaeus, Clement of Rome, Dionysius of Rome, and, strange to say, Dionysius of Alexandria. In his second letter that his namesake, on occasions and defenses, I shall give you this very words, quote, With all these two, giving thanks, and with the same words which they used, who lived before us, and in the form and in the order received by them, end our letter to you. To God the Father, and to the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, together with the Holy Ghost, glory and empire forever and ever. Amen. End quote. Nor can anyone say these words have been altered. He would not have so emphatically said that he had received a form and an order, had he said, in the Spirit. For of this phrase there was frequent use. It was the other phrase needed to be defended. And in the middle of his letter, he writes against Sibelians, the Sibelians, quote, If because of the hypostases are three, they say, they are divided, they are three, even if they do not wish it, or else let them abolish the Trinity altogether. Because of this, after the unity, most divine is the Trinity. Most divine is the Trinity. And likewise, Clement, who writes simply, quote, God lives, and the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, end quote. 
But let us hear how Irenaeus, who lived close to the days of the apostles, speaks of the Holy Spirit in his work against heresies. Quote, Rightly does the apostle call carnal those who, unbridled and urged on by their own desires, have no love for the Holy Spirit. End quote. And elsewhere he says the same. Quote, the, apostles cries out, the apostle cries out to us that flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven, lest we fail to reach the kingdom of heaven through having no part in the divine spirit. End quote. And if anyone should consider Eusebius of Palestine as being also worthy of credit because of his wide experience, I shall put before you certain words of his concerning polygamy against the ancients. He speaks in this way, leading up to the question, quote, Calling upon the God of the prophets, who gives light through our Savior Jesus Christ, together with the Holy Spirit, end quote. We find origin also in so many of his expositions of the Psalms giving glory to God, quote, together with the Holy Spirit, end quote. And though he is not altogether sound in all his notions concerning the Holy Spirit, nevertheless, he also, in many places, accepting with reverence the authority of custom, uses phrases concerning the Holy Spirit which are in accord with true belief. It is, if I do not err, in the sixth book of his commentary on John, that he clearly says that the Spirit is to be adored in these very words, quote, As the washing with water is a symbol of the purification of the soul, now washed clean of every filth of evil doing, nevertheless it is also, and of itself, to the one who gives himself up to the divinity of the adorable trinity, a source and beginning of blessings. End quote. And again, in his exposition of the epistle to the Romans, he says, quote, The holy powers are able to comprehend the divinity of the only begotten and of the Holy Spirit. End quote. Thus it seems to me that the authority of tradition often compels men to speak in a manner contrary to their own notions. How then am I an innovator and a maker of new phrases when I have set before you as the beginners, the champions of the word, whole nations, peoples, and usage that is older than the memory of man, as well as men who are pillars of the church, renowned both for knowledge and spiritual authority? Yet because of this, a whole host of enemies have attacked me, and every village and town and even remote places are full of those who calumniate me. Painful indeed are such things to one whose desire is peace, but great is the reward of patience and surpassing afflictions endured for the faith. Charitable readers will find my defense in what I have said, and we have received a word that was found worthy and acceptable by holy men and confirmed by long usage. For from the time of the proclaiming of the gospel until now, it is shown to have been used in the churches, and what is more, as having a significance that is in accord with what is sacred and with true religion. For the rest, what defense have we prepared for ourselves before the supreme tribunal? This, that in the first place we were led to give glory to the Spirit because of the honor given to him by the Lord, uniting him to the Father and to the himself and the giving of baptism, and then because of this, that each one of us is established in the knowledge of God through this initiation in the divine mysteries. And lastly, by the fear above all of the threatened punishment, which drives from us all thought of indignity and unworthy belief concerning the Holy Spirit, to whom with the Father and the Son be honor and praise, glory forever. Amen.